Good afternoon, traders and investors. Hope everybody's doing well. Wrapping up another week here with a Friday market recap. And this morning, guys, we got a beautiful inflation report, this time from the producer side. So we're going to take a look at that. We also had some financials earnings, a lot of your major banks reporting. We're going to take a look exactly how healthy those banks are and if they had anything to say about consumer strength. And lastly, we are going to obviously go over our technical analysis for our major indexes, our major tech names, and lastly, go over my portfolio to wrap things up. So without further ado, guys, got a great video prepared for you today. So let's get right into it here. Spy down, Spy actually up 0.07% on the day, QQQ up 0.05%, financials pulling slightly bit, bit a bit back we're going to go over that with the earnings and healthcare taking a little bit of a dip as well but overall guys markets reacting very nicely to your producer inflation number this morning and it was a very good one Going over the heat map, you'll see that today's market was fairly mixed here. We did have some uh, slight gains here. Intra sector rotate, intra, right? Sector rotation from a lot of your sectors here. Healthcare, a couple names green, UNH red after reporting earnings. Financials mostly pulling back on the day. Wells Fargo was your loss leader in that respect, but the bank earnings were fairly good. We're going to go over those as well. And big tech as well, fairly mixed with Tesla leading the way down. We're going to go over exactly why Tesla has been coming down over the course of the day. They had two negative news elements so we're going to go over those in the technical analysis when we do tesla but overall guys fairly decent mixed market here big tech continues to be a sector of outperformance here leading on to the last week of gains now on the one day relative you'll see everything pretty much almost in the green here healthcare financials pulling back ever so slightly consumer cyclical leading to the downside consumer cyclical your big uh aggregators here your big the people responsible pretty much for the downside, Amazon, Tesla, and a lot of little names within here, Airbnb, Starbucks as well, Nike you can see. So consumer cyclical continues to be ever so slightly weak, but overall a decent day in the market. So what exactly happened this morning, guys? Well, producer inflation. So you guys know yesterday's CPI number showed that we were still hot in a few sticky areas and the areas were some of them quite temporary items, right? So shelter. Shelter has been kind of a sticky component here, but is said to be coming down over the course of the next six to 12 months. Shelter obviously takes has a big lag effect to it. So it will take a little bit longer for that to come down. But as a whole, I was very pleased with the CPI report yesterday. A lot of your items such as food have come down considerably right and that was a very positive thing but overall cpi was ever so slightly hot yesterday so we were looking to producers to see if it was going to be an additional hot reading today or if they were going to say something good and as a matter of fact guys they came out and said something absolutely amazing so here are the ppi numbers that came out fresh this morning the forecast was for 0.1 percent month over month you can see here guys we actually got a negative deflation read here so minus 0.1 percent for the month over month core did not change at all the forecast was 0.2 and the actual actually got flat right so we were expecting a little bit of an increase got flat which is very very good your core ppi year over year is down to about 1.8 percent that is absolutely beautiful here and the ppi as a whole right producer price inflation was actually down uh one percent over the year here guys so very very good everything coming in below the estimates so here are the headlines here guys u.s producer prices unexpectedly fall just as yesterday cpi unexpectedly rose right as goods deflation seen persisting. Very, very good report by your producers here. U.S. producer prices unexpectedly fell in December amid declining costs for goods such as diesel, fuel, and food, suggesting inflation would continue to subside and allow the Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates this year. Big, big, big line right here, right? So the inflation pipeline is clearing and consumer prices will gradually get to the Fed's 2% target, said Jeffrey Roach, Jeffrey Roach, chief economist at LPL Financial in Charlotte, North Carolina. The producer price index for final demand dipped 0.1%. Very, very, very good. The PPI has now declined for three consecutive months. Extremely, extremely good here, guys. If you take a look at some of the numbers here, here's the graph for your producer price inflation, and you can see very beautiful trend to the downside here. So we're going to take the total line, which is the line in red. You can see we're really trending back to our previous levels pre prior to the pandemic, right? And you can see now for the third month in a row, pretty much October, November, and December with negative reads. So deflation in producer prices, which is exactly what you want to see. And your core as well, your core is pretty much all the way balanced back to pre-pandemic levels as well coming in just at about 0.2% for a month over month on an annualized basis. That would be about 
you know, 2.4, 2.5%, everything very, very good. And here's your components, right? Look at the goods deflation here, guys. 0.4% month over month, and even services coming in roughly flat here. So very good read on both of them. A couple little items here, foods. Foods down 0.9% month over month, very, very good. Energy down 1.2%, very, very good as well, right? So you had a little bit of an uptick here in residential electric power. Natural gas was down pretty much offsetting the electricity. Gasoline, slight little uptick here, but look at jet fuel. Jet fuel down 12.1%, home heating down 4.8%. Very, very good reads as a whole here, guys. So I'm very pleased in what happened with the PPI. That is a good sign that inflation is coming down from the producer side of things, which should carry over into your consumer side of things, right? Just keep in mind that yesterday's CPI right? There was never a question whether or not overall goods, overall goods and services were coming down. They are. There's just a few little sticky uh, services here in the CPI per se, right? It was shelter. You had medical insurance. You had transportation. Those were the three main things that were still persistently high in your CPI. A bit of an outlier case here on the last two ones, right? Medical insurance and transportation costs. So those can obviously go ever so slightly away. It's really shelter that everybody's worried about because it's such a large component of your CPI. But overall, guys, I'm very pleased with the inflation reports that we did get this week. It just goes to show that the Federal Reserve has been doing a very, very good job uh, with rising interest rates here and really tightening down on consumer spending here. And if you take a look here, guys, this is the, this is the Fed tool watch that we were watching yesterday. So here Here's yesterday's data after the CPI. You guys remember that the probabilities for a rate decrease were about 70%. This is after the CPI read that came out yesterday. We'll take a look at today here, guys. Now, with the producer inflation coming in right now, 75.4% of a rate decrease odd into March. This is pretty much the highest level that we've had here uh, on this reading in the past couple of weeks here. Very, very, very good. If you take a look at the historical here, guys, we just got to take away a bunch of all of this stuff, right? And we're going to take a look. This is your March meeting highlighting. We're going to be looking for five and five and a quarter. And you can see here, right, that prior, we had almost 80% coming back in the end of December here. It's been coming down early on in the year as those inflation fears kind of sur uh, resurfaced once again. And now ever since we've had those reports, in the last two days, you can see what's happened. We're really back up and this chart is not reflective as of today. You can see down below in the lower right hand corner, it only says Thursday, January 11th. So this line should be back up pretty much all the way back up to your 75% mark. Very, very good. Markets are still pricing in the rate cut for March, but we're going to see obviously how that happens. But Moral of the story, guys, very happy with inflation. The, the big gist of it is inflation is still trending down in the right direction. Yes, are there a few sticky items still remaining? Yes, but overall here, guys, the trend is in the positive direction for us, and I do believe that will continue over the course of 2024. So with all that being said, guys, before we get into our technicals, let's look at a little bit of bank earnings. And we're only going to do two here today. I know there was a lot of them here today. We had uh, JP Morgan, we had Bank of America, Wells Fargo, we even had BlackRock, Citigroup, BNY Mellon, right? But we're only going to be going over the two biggest, JP Morgan and Bank of America. I do want to do BlackRock, but might have to save it for a video potentially on Monday here. So we're going to go over those two as of today. So what exactly did the banks say here, guys? Well, banks upbeat on U.S. consumer despite bank profit declines, inflation, and rising debt levels. These bank profit declines, when we get into the earnings, you'll see that they're just a couple of write-downs over the course of the year, namely from the banking crisis, having to write down acquisitions and whatnot. So we're going to go over this real quick here. Right. All the banks had one-time charges in their quarterly results, many of them specifically related to their own businesses, making this quarter particularly messy. These write-downs are in terms of several acquisitions that were made in terms of after the wake of the Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank collapses, right? So setting aside the turbulence of the banking panic and the charges, the banks had a mostly strong 2023. They benefited from a resilient job market, U.S. consumers who, despite inflation, continued to spend and not fall behind on their debts. Key line right here and higher interest rates that have boosted revenue across the industry. JP Morgan Chase said that its profits dropped 15% in the fourth quarter, despite the bank reporting record quarterly revenue here. So JP Morgan's profits fell because it was required to pay $2.9 billion to the federal to the FDIC, essentially, as part of an industry-wide one-time special assessment by the regulator to cover the uh, $16.7 billion in costs to cover the uninsured depositors caught up in the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, obviously the latter which was acquired here by JP Morgan. 
So with that aside, JP Morgan brought in an eye-popping $50 billion in profits last year, up from $37.6 billion in profits in 2022. Very, very, very good here, guys. The years, here's the kicker here. Read this. The U.S. economy continues to be resilient with consumers still spending and markets currently expecting a soft landing, said the CEO himself, Mr. Jamie Dimon, in a statement. The bank pointed, uh, painted a relatively strong picture of consumer spending, showing that JP Morgan customers spent 8% more on their cards compared to a year ago and are carrying 14% higher credit card balance. So slightly increase on the credit card balance, but as they reiterated, not falling behind on their debts. The bank did set more to cover potentially bad loans, but said the health of the consumer remains strong. Everyone wants to see a problem, but the reality, we aren't seeing any yet, said the CFO here at JP Morgan, Jeremy Barnum. So very, very, very good here. Right. And as well, uh, we're going to go over to what the Bank of America CFO said. The consumer still has plenty of firepower, said Bank of America CFO Alistair Borthwick in a call with reporters. Very, very good. Wells Fargo CEO themselves said that consumers balances were still strong in their call with investors here. So very, very good. They're saying that the consumers are still strong as a whole and the bank's profits themselves had very, very good numbers. Now we're going to go over them specifically. So let's start off with Bank of America here. Right, so Bank of America coming off on the day, negative EPS, that's because of a one-time write-down where they had to outlay a bunch of funds towards the FDIC. So a normal little hit on EPS here and a ever so slight miss on revenue here. In terms of the technicals here, I do like Bank of America at this level here, guys. It is still relatively cheap, decently discounted off of its all-time high, and we are just looking for a weekly higher low. If we do pull back in a $31, $30 range, I may be tempted to write some short puts as part of my weekly option strategy. If if we do get presented with an opportunity down there, Bank of America, obviously, with a very solid balance sheet, they pay a nice dividend, their price to earnings ratio is relatively cheap. And in terms of their growth metrics here, guys, they will still be growing here. Look at this EPS expansion, 24, 25, 26, and revenue expansion over the next three years as well, albeit a small revenue expansion. We're still talking about, you know, between three and 4% of revenue increases year over year. And obviously a decline in interest rates should stimulate consumer loan uh, spending ending as well, right? Where consumers get back to, um, getting more loans from the bank. So Bank of America shares fall after company reports lower fourth quarter profit hit by regulatory charge. So these one-time items, guys, are just at a one-time item. So we have to kind of look past them. The bank said it was hit by a pre-tax charge of $1.6 in the quarter related to the transition away from the LIBOR rate. Bank of America stock was down 2.6% here today uh, over the year, as a matter of fact. And you can see on their earnings here, as a matter of fact, today, they're still down about 1% here. So yes, they had a bit of a dip, bit of recovery intraday filling in this little gap over here like i said guys 30 dollar mark is the one that i'm going to be shopping for for bank of america but as a whole guys fairly decent all right so eps 70 cents adjusted versus 68 cents expected here right the revenue 22.1 billion versus 23.74 expected as well so very very decent um decent little beat here on eps if you were to take away the one time aligned item as we were talking about right so this one time line item is why you're seeing the eps miss here on trading view they're taking that for granted um, but as a whole they did beat on eps if you were to take that up so the bank said it was hit by the pre-tax charge we've obviously went over that already um the results also included a special 2.1 billion fee charged by the FDIC. So them as well, just like JP Morgan getting hit by the fee. The fee is tied to the failures of Silicon Valley and Signature Bank, right? Excluding the items, the company said it earned 70 cents per share, which outpaced analyst expectations. So this is the true number here, right? So we reported solid fourth quarter and full year results as all of our business achieved strong, strong organic growth with record client activity and digital engagement. Our expense discipline allowed us to continue investing in growth initiatives, strong capital and liquidity level positions as well to continue to deliver responsible growth in 2024. So their balance sheet is very, very, very solid here. They've also put aside a number of, uh, you know, over $1.1 billion in provision for credit losses in the event that Consumers aren't able to pay back some of their credit card fees, right? 
Bank of America said its net interest income decreased 5% to $13.9 billion due to higher deposit costs and lower deposit balances. So the higher deposit costs is obviously people, when they're promoting their savings account, the bank obviously has to pay that out, and then the lower deposit balances as consumers are potentially dipping into their uh, savings rates as well, right? So all in all, guys, they have to pay out more. Yes, we do have less people depositing money with the banks, but the money that is depositing, they do have to pay out a higher deposit cost in terms Terms of the interest that they pay back to clients right so very very decent here revenue from consumer banking dipped four percent to 10.3 billion dollars while sales and trading revenue went up three percent to 3.6 billion here so a bit of a mixed report from bank of america but no red flags is the moral of the story here guys the bank is still set up very 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 good for the near to long-term future and like i said 31 down to 30 dollars is my sweet spot for uh making a potential buy we also have a potential monthly reversion happening here where the bulls are trying to set a monthly uptrend after losing the monthly uptrend all the way back since pretty much November uh, 2021 into early 2022. So decent earnings on Bank of America, nothing spectacular, but no red flags, guys, solid business. And now we're gonna look at JP Morgan to wrap it up here. JP Morgan down 0.73% on the day. But guys, prior to these earnings, you know, they did hit the all time highs pretty much, right? Leading into the earnings and even this morning on the earnings. So a little bit of a sell off intraday here. You can see the initial reaction to the earnings was quite positive, but then selling off intraday here, a little bit of a bearish engulfing candle. JP Morgan is currently a little bit too high for me here, guys, in terms of your technical analysis. I would like to pick up JP Morgan personally. I would start writing puts back in the 160 down to about 155 range. That's going to be your area of previous resistance, newfound support, and your moving averages are down there already. So if you do have a little bit of weekly correction, I will be looking to make some plays on JP Morgan on this pullback. JP Morgan, contrary to Bank of America, has already long ago completed its monthly uptrend reversion here. So now we're just looking for a monthly higher low on any pullback. So that's why I say target this 155 to about 160 area if you're looking for some JP Morgan. As a whole, guys, they did very good in terms of earnings. Wait till you see these numbers here on JP Morgan. So JP Morgan down on their standardized EPS. Once again, the one line items. You'll see that if you were to remove these one time items, guys, the EPS was actually around 3.9, which would have been a beat on the estimate. But as a whole, they did miss here with those one line items here, 9.22% of the downside and ever so slight miss on revenue. But, but, but guys, take a look at this, right? JP Morgan here, the largest lender in the US reported Friday that it raked in a record almost 50 billion dollars in annual net income this is profit here guys the most ever in history of the american banking industry and it happened during a year that was the scariest for the industry since the financial crisis of 2008 we're talking obviously about the uh, uh the uh local and regional banking crisis of march of this past 2023 so here you go jpm breaking away from the pack look at these record profits here by jp morgan absolutely ridiculous really dwarfing the rest of the industry they have more profits on an annualized basis guys than the rest of your big banks pretty much combined so absolutely ridiculous uh year for jp morgan jp morgan chase profits fall after 2.9 billion fee from the regional bank rescues we've talked about that here guys the bank said quarterly earnings slipped 15 percent we read that in the previous article here excluding the fee tied to the regional banking crisis and 743 million in investment losses earnings would have been 3.97 a share. And I'll remind you guys, the expectation without those was around 3.35. So they would have had a very, very healthy beat. We were talking about almost a 20% beat on EPS if you were to remove those one line items here. So very, very decent here, guys, right? So JP Morgan uh, CEO said the full year results hit a record because the largest US bank by assets performed better than expected on net interest income and credit quality. Look at this. The bank said it generated nearly $50 billion in profit, $4.1 billion, which came from the First Republic, which they acquired here, right? And wait until you see this, guys. They actually, JP Morgan is set up their net interest income for in their net interest income in terms of profit. So the amount of money they make between the loans that they originate and the loans that they have to pay is around $80 billion for the year, which is absolutely ridiculous here, guys, right? So the US economy continues to be resilient with consumers still spending and markets currently expecting a soft landing. We just saw that in the previous article, Diamond said in the release here. 
right? But deficit spending and supply chain adjustments may lead inflation to be stickier and rates to be higher than market expects. Risk to markets and economies include central banks' steps to rein in and support programs and wars in the Ukraine and the Middle East. These significant and somewhat unprecedented forces cause us to remain cautious. So a little bit of pushback here uh, by Jamie Dimon. Right. So, but all in all here, guys, very, very strong report uh, by JP Morgan. I'm just trying to find that uh, $80 billion number. I don't want to spend too much time on this, guys, but uh, their net interest income here, I'm not too sure where it was in one of these articles here, was around $80 billion. So you guys can read around that. JP Morgan absolutely putting in a, a tremendously uh, bullish year in terms of profits. Look at your revenues down here, guys, right? Total revenue for the year, $240 billion, really, really expanding from your uh, growth here in 2022. Now moving up to 2023. And as a whole here, guys, on the, on the forecast as well, you will see that revenue and EPS should be ever expanding as well. So here is your end of year uh, estimate for 2024. EPS, you can see that it will remain fairly steady as well. So no red flags to be seen in the business. And as a whole, 2024, 2025, 2026, revenue should continue to expand too. So both banks set up very good. JP Morgan has a very, very solid balance sheet as well. No red flags for the business as well. Just a bit overbought. So all in all, guys, the bank earnings fairly decent. Not only are their balance sheets strong, not only are they bringing in record profits and protecting their profit margins here, but that is in a rising interest rate environment where a lot of these banks took out bonds at very low yields and they've been having a lot of unrealized losses on them since picking up these bonds back in 2020, guys. So very good year for the banks. I'm pleased what they said, uh, not only about their financial stability, but also what they had to say about the consumer. So that's pretty much everything we had for your initial financials earnings here. I like the way financials are starting this earnings season. Now, let's get into some technical analysis. We're gonna go over this quickly because nothing much has changed. So SPY still in this engulfing move, right? So after having losing the daily uptrend here, bear setting the lower low, we are now looking for the size of the bounce. Size of the bounce was 100%. So now the bulls still remain in control. Yes, short-term price action isn't that clear. Hourly uptrend is still trying to be recaptured by the bulls here, just a tightening range on the on the one hour chart. So it remains to be seen here, guys, right? Whichever this range way this range breaks, if it breaks negative on Monday, looking for daily consolidation at that point, guys. Any daily consolidation, anything above 466.39, gonna be looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation here. Bulls engulfing most of the move, so now they have enough space to set a daily higher low into further trend change, and we're so close to the all-time high on SPY. Everything looking good, and even on the weekly here, guys, weekly uptrend does look uh, solidly in motion here with your higher low being set 466.69 at the low of last week. So everything looking fairly decent in SPY. Just need to monitor the short-term price action. Obviously, if this range breaks bullish into Monday, Day, well, we're just going to have bullish continuation on this daily leg up here and a break of your all-time highs is likely. Now moving on to QQQ. QQQ also with a very, you know, relatively solid day here, guys, not giving back much, ending up slightly positive here. And I like the size of this bounce here, guys, right? So after losing the daily uptrend, daily downswing was in motion by the bears. They flushed the low, created a lower low. We were looking for the size of the bounce. And now the size of the bounce is excessively healthy here, guys. We're talking about over 80% of the bounce. So in this case, the bulls have created enough space now for any pullback to just be for a higher low for a potential trend change. So looking fairly good on the one hour, same as SPY, just a tightening hourly range as a whole with a slight bullish lean here. So we'll see how this breaks on Monday. If it breaks to the downside, just looking for a bit of daily consolidation here. Target your moving averages as short-term support. Bulls should be able to play off of those fairly nicely. And obviously, if this range breaks bullish on Monday, well, we are just going to be looking for this daily move to continue and potentially eclipse our previous 52-week highs. That'll give a fully engulfing move here. And then it'll be relatively easy for the bulls to set a higher low way up there, uh, pretty much, you know, higher low on the previous 52-week high here, using it as support, and then for a potential other leg up on the weekly, everything is still looking very bullish as well, right? Weekly uptrend just continuously in motion here by the bulls. So everything looking good here, guys. The producer uh, inflation report and your bank earnings really gave a positive tone to our bulls here today, so I like it. Now, XLF Financials, XLF Financials still holding, guys, still holding, despite the negative returns here on the day from a lot of your financials name, XLF still holding your 12 EMA here, right? So daily uptrend is still in motion. Yesterday's low is gonna be key. If ever we flush yesterday's low into next week, your daily downtrend will be started, daily consolidation underway. 
Loss of the 12 EMA, but not that big of a deal here, guys. Bulls with a ton of space on the weekly here. On the weekly, just expecting a weekly higher low. 37 down to 36 area should be a very decent area of support if ever the Bulls do choose to pull back. So keep an eye on those names, guys. If JP Morgan continues to consolidate, if names like Bank of America continue to pull back on their weekly timeframes as well, you may get some juicy opportunities in them specifically. That'll allow for XLF to be slightly cooled off as well. Pull back in this area most likely for a retest before a rise. The decrease Increase in rates, guys, in March will be very favorable for the banks, in my opinion here. So keep an eye on that. But as of now, bulls still in control of the daily uptrend. Obviously, if you break the highs, guys, well, nothing changes. Daily uptrend just continues and we'll be on for pretty much week 12 in a row of higher highs. Now, moving on to XLV. XLV looking good as well here, guys. Down 0.25% on the day, but really just sideways consolidation from XLV bulls here. Looking very healthy. Daily uptrend is still in motion. At this point, we're just looking for daily consolidation. Anything above 138.50, just looking for a daily higher low for potential price increase here. It's up to the bears to really prove it to us. And so far, the bears unable to really set significant hourly downtrends, right? They can't even really capture this 12 EMA on the four hour uh, in a decent fashion to really give themselves momentum to the downside. But if for ever which reason over the course of the next couple of weeks, we do lose that and come into daily consolidation, it's fine. Weekly bulls, full, full, full control here. Target this area down here. We're talking about 136.50 down to about 132.50 for a beautiful area breakout a retest of this whole range right here, a breakout retest for a potential rise into 2024. Monthly is looking absolutely gorgeous on XLV as well. So it's really up to the bears to prove to us when they want uh, this daily trend to come to an end. But as of now, guys, your daily bulls are just simply in full control. Now, moving on to IWM Russell, IWM Russell, IWM really battling again here, guys, down 0.17%. They started off the day good, as a matter of fact, right? From the low of yesterday, uh, from yesterday's close, they were actually up, you know, all the way up to about 1.69% and ending the day red. So just look at this phenomenal pullback here in the Russell over the course of the day. So Russell still still battling at the lower levels, but your bears are favored here, guys, right? We have the low, we have the higher lows here, we're really equaling with pretty much last uh, Monday's trading. And now we're potentially looking for the bears to follow through with the daily downtrend. So this is what we're gonna watch. The bulls have not bounced high enough to give themselves enough of a chance to set a daily higher low onto higher highs, right? So as of yesterday, even, they didn't close below here, but they did pretty much set a daily downtrend in motion. So we're gonna see if the, bo if the, bear if the bears excuse me, are able to set the daily downtrend further in motion here. Your 12 EMA is now acting as resistance as often uh, before acting as support this entire time of the rally here. And you do have this whole area right now, right? This red box, pretty much 201 all the way down to about 195. That is also currently acting as newfound resistance, unable to stay above it. Now it's acting as resistance as well. So we'll see guys, we'll really see if the IWM, bull, IWM bulls are able to reverse this into potentially a bullish upswing and really start recapturing a lot of this space that was lost, if not, we're just going to continue in healthy weekly consolidation. Russell obviously ran the most out of all your indexes from the bottom. We're talking about 26%. So it's just a very healthy weekly pullback. Anything above 162.50, just looking for a weekly higher low for further trend change here into 2024. And my sweet spot, guys, we're coming up onto it, right? 188 down to about 182, this cluster of moving averages, which is roughly your average of this whole range right here. That's the spot I'm targeting for potential entry positions on IWM. Now, lastly, the Dow Jones here, guys. Dow Jones performing somewhat decently here, guys. I know it's down 0.31%, but on the technicals, nothing really changes. Still playing defense at this 12 EMA, never losing it the entire time of this rally, and bulls are still in control here, guys. Daily uptrend setting a new high before pulling back today. So your daily uptrend simply just continues at this point. I know we're a bit sideways right now, but we're cooling off the RSI in the, in the process, and it, that's the best case scenario. When you can consolidate sideways, cool off your lower time frames, you're not losing the bullish trends here, not losing the levels. So bulls, still in full control here guys any pullback at this point looking for a daily higher low anything above 37 290 this level right here just going to be looking for a daily higher low bulls still in full control here guys right the, the hourly bears are not able to set the hourly downtrend the bulls just continue rejecting them and even on the four hour guys not able to set a four hour downtrend in motion and gain some momentum against these moving averages right to the downside but if forever it's reason next week that changes you guys know the drill we're just going to be looking for a daily 
consolidation. Daily consolidation will just mean weekly consolidation as well since we're at new 52 week highs. And this has just been a few weeks of very healthy consolidation. Any further to the downside, guys, just keep an eye on your previous all time high, right? 36, uh, 800 down to 36, 400 ish. That's going to be the level I'm watching. 12 EMA is right down here as well for a healthy breakout retest of the zone before potential further rise into 2024. Dow Jones, no red flags at all here, guys, right? Even on the monthly, monthly breakout is more than confirmed. So really no red flags, bull control, bulls control all of your higher timeframes. Moving on to crypto, Bitcoin, heck of a sell the news event, right? After your ETF approval here, guys, Bitcoin is now down 13% from the highs after that news release, really starting to retest the lows of this range here today, right? So now bears with a heck of an engulfing move, losing the daily uptrend, right? We were looking for any higher low at this point, anything above 43,180, this level right here was looking for a daily higher low, the bears now engulfing. So will the bears be able to set the daily downtrend? This is your first big, big, big close below this 12 EMA. Look, we haven't had really big, big, big closes below this 12 EMA in a while. This is a significant close. So we'll see, can the bears turn this into a daily downtrend, which will just mean weekly consolidation. And look at this weekly candle. I know it closes on Sunday here, guys, but after being overbought in the weekly for a while, this bearish doji candle does potentially lead us to believe that maybe the bears are in for a bit more correction. A bit more correction would just mean that we're looking for monthly higher lows eventually here. So now that this big news event is past us, there's only one bullish catalyst remaining for Bitcoin, and that is the halving event in April. So over the course of February and March, do we pull back ever so slightly in Bitcoin, set the monthly higher low, and then resume bullishness into the April catalyst? That is something that I'm going to be watching in terms of the narrative. But as one thing's for sure, the bears are now in short-term control. They do have an opportunity to set the lower high here for potential lower low continuation into further weekly consolidation here guys and you guys know my sweet spot that I want to buy more Bitcoin at 38 down to about 36,000 not sure that we're going to get there but if we do get there that is definitely where I'm going to be picking some up leading into that April event for Bitcoin Ethereum Ethereum performing very very uh, good compared to Bitcoin right so Ethereum with a heck of a breakout here guys and not giving back too much as opposed to Bitcoin in this case and this day where uh, Bitcoin dropped about 2% uh, Bitcoin dropped 6% and Ethereum was actually up today look now the ETH to BTC chart, this is exactly what we're talking about here, guys. This is what we've been waiting for. Ethereum, big engulfing move. It's starting to take over for Bitcoin. So after having been muted against Bitcoin now, Ethereum now with potential news of its ETF approval, it's supposed to be next in line. So now, does Bitcoin take a breather, allowing for ETH to continue to run? Well, if you take a look at ETH BTC chart, it definitely appears that way, that Ethereum is starting to gain some momentum, gain some strength against Bitcoin here. Now, first close above. If we close this week like this, guys, this will be our first close above this descending wedge here, which is a very bullish pattern. Usually when these do break, you're looking for the breakout, retest of the trend line here and further run. So will Ethereum take over the spot life? It's kind of looking that way, guys. All the signs are pointing that way. Daily bulls are looking very healthy. Daily uptrend here, just looking for a daily higher low. Anything above 2167, just looking for a higher low here, right? This whole area for your resistance gonna be support now. 2411 should be the retest zone if we get all the way back there. Should have some very, very bullish support for the continuation here of the daily uptrend. And the weekly is looking a lot better than Bitcoin here, guys. We'll see how it closes on uh, Sunday, of course, but weekly uptrend still currently in motion from Ethereum here. And your monthly upswing just continues. Uphead resistance for Ethereum right around that $2,700 mark here, guys. We pretty much tapped it yesterday ever so slightly. So we'll see, can we come back into that area and close into it? Or uh, was that to top here? And are we going to pull back? Those are the two things I'm going to be watching here over the next few days and weeks. Now we've gone to big tech. So big tech here, guys. Apple, Apple up ever so slightly here, guys, but you can't really tell, right? Really an inside trading bar with yesterday. The bulls have to reset this hourly uptrend, right? We have to start resuming this in a more significant fashion to the upside if you want this daily bounce to continue. If you lose your hourly uptrend here into Monday, well, the daily bounce is over and then we're gonna be looking, can the bulls save the lower lows? The size of the bounce on Apple is not enough in my opinion here, guys. We only got up, barely didn't even touch 50% retracement, right? So if we do start pulling back here, the probabilities do favor the bears for being able to retest these lows and potentially put in some lower lows here. After such a heck of a drop, I need to say a larger bounce to guarantee the bulls capacity at changing the daily uptrend, but so far don't have a sizable enough bounce 
The bulls are really getting stopped here at your 12 EMA. So we're going to take a very, very close look at Apple. One thing's for sure. If we do pull back into this area, guys, my sweet spot 181 down to 175 is where I'm going to be looking to pick up Apple. And even on the weekly here, guys, right, losing the weekly uptrend. So we'll see, can the bulls put a slow move up here and start recapturing this weekly uptrend into the next couple uh, of quarters here in the next couple of weeks, sorry. All right, we do have quarterly earnings for Apple here coming up in just a couple of weeks, 1st of February. So that's going to be key. I'm not expecting some major price action before those earnings. And I do think that traders will be pretty much uh, waiting to see what happens before starting some substantial positions. If we're back into this zone, guys, and we get bullish earnings from Apple, I do think it's going to have a very positive catalyst. Either or, I'm picking up some Apple shares. 181 down to 175 should be a fairly good area for me. Moving on to AMD. AMD pulling back on the day here, minus 1%. But after such a bullish engulfing move here, right, we have the daily uptrend, loss of the daily uptrend with the lower low being set by the bears right here. And then we were looking for the size of the bounce. The size of the bounce was 100%. Now, when this move tops out, just looking for the higher low. And that's exactly what we're looking for here, guys. Just looking for a daily higher low to reset the daily uptrend. And bulls are playing some good defense here at the 12 EMA. AMD looking very, very healthy. Any pullback, anything above uh, 133.85, Looking for the higher low for further trend continuation. No red flags in AMD's business at all. Earnings coming up end of January as well. And on the weekly here, guys, weekly looking very good. We have your weekly uptrend here. Weekly higher low set last week. And now we're just looking for the continuation of the weekly uptrend. So no red flags on AMD. AMD is looking very good. How will you know when this daily move down is done? We'll just keep an eye, guys, on the one hour, right? Bears are in control of the one hour downtrend at this point. As soon as excuse me, as the bulls are able to recapture this, you know, your daily move down is down and your daily move down is done. And then it's up to the bulls to really smash this double top 52 week high and really reset the daily uptrend. Moving on to Amazon, Amazon looking very, very, very good as well here, guys, right? So when this move tops out, like we were saying yesterday, just look for the daily higher low after having lost the daily uptrend, daily downtrend by the bears, looking for the size of the bounce. It was over 100% engulfing move by the bulls. It gives them a beautiful opportunity at setting the week of the daily higher low here anything above 144 looking for the daily higher low for further trend continuation this whole area right 153 going to be acting as support and you do have your moving averages down here as well going to be tough for the bears to make any significant dent in that so on the hourly we still are consolidating even though it's a bit sideways on amazon here that's what you want to see a little bit of sideways consolidation daily bull flag before another daily leg up amazon should be having a very profitable year this year, guys. So I am very bullish on Amazon. Amazon and Google, guys, will be my two most bullish plays out of most big tech here, discounting NVIDIA. NVIDIA is going to probably have another spectacular year. But out of your traditional big tech here who doesn't move the way NVIDIA does, Amazon and Google are my two favorite picks for the year in terms of some uh, in terms of some rally capacity, right? Apple, Microsoft, and Meta have already put in a ton of work, but Amazon and Google have kind of been left behind in the grand scheme of things, right? Not Still not that close to their all-time highs. Amazon still, you know, relatively decently off the all-time highs, about 18%. And even we're going to go to the next chart, Google. Google is still about, you know, 6% off the all-time highs. So Amazon, in this case, looking very good for your daily pullback here. And on the weekly, guys, weekly chart is beautiful. Weekly uptrend confirmed. Weekly higher low was set last year. And then we got a break. So weekly uptrend just continues for Amazon in this case. Looking very good. Moving on to Google. Google continuing the daily uptrend right here, right? So we were saying whenever this move tops up with a loss of your hourly trend, which happened yesterday, we were looking for potential daily consolidation. But now Google bulls kind of recapturing your hourly uptrend over the course of the day. So if they continue this into next week here, guys, your daily push higher will just continue. They will set a new daily uptrend at this point here using this previous area as some support right here, 143 onto a next potential leg. If for ever which reason we lose this temporary hourly uptrend into furtherance of a hourly downtrend, it's okay. Daily consolidation, guys, still just continues at this point here. And anything above 137, which is very healthy daily consolidation for another leg up. Big areas of support down here, obviously 12 EMA. And then this 140 down to 138 area is beautiful area of support as well. You can see it best on the weekly. Weekly uptrend simply continues on Google, smashing to new highs this week. So weekly uptrend solidly in motion, no red flags. Moving on to Meta. Give me a quick second here, guys. So moving on to Meta here, guys. Meta. Absolutely amazing continuation by Meta here, guys, today, right? 1.3% to the upside. Meta, just like Google, never lost the daily uptrends, even despite all the most recent sell-offs, right? In the last, about two weeks ago, right? That first week of January at this point, 
Meta never losing the hour, the daily trends right here. So just daily trend does continue here. As soon as this move tops out, we are just looking for a daily higher low. Anything above 33, 39.80, just gonna be looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. Bulls in full control. Keep an eye this area for a pullback. 359.87, 360-ish. Let's call it right previous area of resistance now going to be used as support and your 12 EMA is right there as well on the weekly weekly is looking fantastic for meta weekly uptrend just simply continues to be confirmed at this point right and now with your weekly higher low being set just moving on to the next even if we do pull back on the weekly tons and tons and tons of space here guys next area we're targeting guys all-time high 384 watch out for that meta bulls no sign of slowing down everything looking very good Microsoft, Microsoft as well, looking very healthy since breaking this range up here. Microsoft now setting new all-time highs yesterday and continuing a bit of that motion today. So very bullish chart by Microsoft right here. Daily uptrend is back confirmed to the bulls at this point. Hourly was never truly lost, right? The, the bears had a chance for an hourly downtrend by flushing yesterday's low. But today you see they just reset the hourly uptrend in their favor. So in that case, the daily move just continues at this point, right? The more space that they put between the all the previous all-time highs, that's going to be the next area of likely pullback here. If we do end up pulling back uh, after this move here, I do think that the previous all-time highs, 384, should be a good area of retest. We're kind of extended from this zone now, but let's say Monday and Tuesday come out and red days on the market. Well, just looking for a pullback into this area here guys right this whole the top end of this range 377.50 it's going to be a breakout retest zone before a future leg up microsoft looking very good any daily pullback just for a higher low anything above 366.54 higher low further trend continuation here weekly trend breakout as well on microsoft looking absolutely amazing tightening range here weekly breakout so weekly uptrend just continues to be confirmed by the bulls and even on the monthly here guys monthly uptrend just resumes in motion right now no red flags on microsoft at all Netflix, Netflix rising early on the day, but then consolidating here, guys, ending the day almost flat. You know, they were up a decent amount on the morning. We're talking about 1.7% to the upside, giving it back a little bit intraday, right? So bulls kind of struggling to maintain these lower time frames. The, the bears able to set the hourly downtrend in motion at the end of the day here. So guys, the size of the bounce was key on, on Netflix here. The candle work is a bit messy, but the gist of things is they were in a daily downtrend. We were looking for the size of the bounce in relation to your lower high right here. And the bounce now engulfing moves. So now at this point, the bulls have a great chance of setting a daily higher low for daily uptrend resumption here or recapture rather after losing it here. A good chance at recapturing it there. You know, uh, Netflix here, earnings very, very soon here, guys. In two Tuesdays from now with Tesla is going to be Netflix earnings. So keep an eye on that. Looking fairly healthy here, guys. Any pullback at this point, anything above 462, just looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. So keep an eye. Moving averages should be a good area of target support for Netflix. Everything looking good. Weekly uptrend looking decent as well, right? Weekly uptrend in motion as well. But if for ever it's reason, guys, we just further, we just tighten up until earnings season until earnings rather comes. And then let's say earnings are bad for every reason. We get a pullback 450 to 425. I mentioned it a couple times on the channel. I am picking up Netflix 450 down to 425. We'll just be looking for a monthly higher low for further trend continuation. Beautiful monthly uptrend on Netflix. We're gonna be looking for them to continue that in motion. Subscriber growth is healthy. Advertising is healthy. Everything looking good for the business. Moving on to NVIDIA. NVIDIA, you know, very solid day despite coming down 0.2%. We were saying as soon as this move tops out, we're just looking for a daily higher low. And now, you know, net, uh, NVIDIA here, guys, what a comeback by NVIDIA, right? After potentially losing the daily uptrend here, daily downtrend was set, tried to recapture it, right? This whole area was a weekly tightening range. So it was a bit of a doozy for people trying to play, you know, the weekly tightening range. And now finally, NVIDIA breaking it to the upside. So on the daily chart, very, very simple analysis, guys. Any pullback, looking for a daily higher low, anything above pretty much 475, just looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. All bulls are in control here, guys, right? Daily bulls are in control. Weekly bulls after this weekly tightening bull flag right here. Weekly breakout, right? So weekly uptrend just continues to be confirmed. And now your monthly uptrend is confirmed by NVIDIA as well. So NVIDIA looking very, very, very good here, guys. If you do get a pullback, I'm expecting a pullback maybe to around your 12 EMA right around here around the 515, 520 mark, you know, but pulling back to 500 at this point, a 10% drop, <clears throat> excuse me, would be fairly fairly hefty. So you always kind of want to look for the breakout of your uh, support of your resistance zone here for retesting it as future support. But 
Nvidia may not drop that much. If they do though, I would be looking to pretty much buy that test of support here, but so far so good. No red flags on Nvidia as of yet. Moving on to Tesla here guys, and Tesla just continues to move to the downside, down almost 4% on the day. Unfortunately, Tesla with two negative news uh, pieces of news at the same time here, guys, right? So Tesla cuts prices of both locally made models in China. So take a look at this here, guys. Tesla shares drop after the car makers cut prices again in China, price war with BYD, and said its lone European factory will be disrupted by attacks in the Red Sea. The company reduced starting prices of the Model 3 sedan by 5.9% and marked down the Model Y sport utility vehicle by 2.8%. This is just for the Chinese market. So a little bit of price reduction here has an impact on margins. The stock did not take liking to that today or yesterday for that matter. And here's the thing as well today. Hours earlier, Tesla told routers it will suspend most production at its Model Y plant near Berlin from January 29th to February 11th. That's two weeks, guys, as suppliers shift transport routes in response to a attacked on vessel in the Red Sea. So here's the problem here, guys, is that, you know, they're having to adopt a more wide shipping lane. So instead of being able, uh, being able to go through the Red Sea, up through the Mediterranean, and deliver the parts to Berlin from pretty much China, well, now the vessels have to go all the way around Africa, which adds 10 days to the shipping times, right? So Tesla, a very unfortunate recipient here of uh, bad news in terms of supply chain issues, right, due to the ongoing conflict in the Red Sea, and the stock definitely did not like that. Breaking below our range here, guys. That's very, very bad, right? So daily downtrend simply perpetuated on Tesla right here. Daily downtrend, very, very, very hard daily downtrend coming, approaching oversold conditions. If we do get daily oversold conditions here, guys, in the lower 200 range, that would be best case scenario for me for looking to play a bounce play, guys. I will now be looking as close as possible to your $200 psychological level if we continue to get downside here and daily RSI continues to trend towards the oversold. On the short-term timeframes here, guys, you can see four hour is deeply oversold after today. And the one hour has kind of been varying between uh, hourly oversold and not for the better part of the last two weeks at this point, right? So until we see the bulls able to reset an hourly uptrend look no hourly uptrend since the end of december since the highs pretty much when they eclipsed the 265 range no hourly uptrend so if you can't even set an hourly uptrend guys don't look for the bottom of the daily yet the bottom of the daily will be when bulls set a significant hourly uptrend in motion and start recapturing your short-term moving averages as of now short-term bears full control of this daily downtrend loss at this point of the weekly uptrend as well the weekly higher low to protect was 228 we lost that today so now bulls losing the weekly uptrend similar to Apple, but weekly downtrend is not set. Weekly downtrend would be lower high and lower low. So now it's up to the bulls here, guys. When we get our daily bounce in motion here, how high will the daily bounce be in relation to 240? If the daily bounce starts on Monday, you're looking to get as high as possible at 240 as possible, create some space, get the, tr the chance for a daily trend change. In my opinion, guys, earnings is going to be absolutely crucial for the company and we really need to have bullish guidance from your management here on the earnings call we haven't i haven't heard elon musk guys be bullish on an earnings call over the last entire year so we need to have a change in the tone of things and they need to focus on the positive aspects of Tesla currently and really give some bullish sentiment back into the stock after having kind of losing that magic over the course of the year but very difficult year for Tesla guys you know They've had uh, they've had they've had supply issues, right? They've had an, an increased interest rate environment, the highest interest rate environment of Tesla's entire life, essentially, guys, right? So very, very, very tough market environment for them. And all while they're trying to uh, scale production and scale at multiple different factories at once, right? So very, very tough year for uh, Tesla as a whole. I do expect for them to come out better on the other end of all this, guys. But the cyclical nature of Tesla being tied to interest rates, tied to supply chain constraints and whatnot, and the conflicts that are going on, definitely not the best period for the company. But that being said, Closer we get to 200, guys, very attracted. The price range, 200 down about 180, guys, is my ultra sweet spot for Tesla. Those, if I get those shares, guys, I will be riding them for a decent bounce, not just trying to play them on the weekly. I'll be riding them back into the mid, uh, mid to high 200s at that point if I can snipe some shares down there. And now our two last ones, guys, Palantir and PayPal. So Palantir, nice little recovery here today, 0.5% to the upside here. Bulls are still looking for this bounce, right? So we're looking high enough bounce in relation to 1788. Let's measure the size of the bounce. Quick recap here, daily downtrend bears are in control. Now, 
We're looking for the size, excuse me, size of this bounce from the bulls. Bulls putting in some decent work here, guys, right? Coming up to the 618 level, well, not only Wednesday, but today as well, and getting a bit rejected. You can see we're getting rejected by the 12 EMA, but we're also getting rejected by this whole area right now that was previous support. It's now acting as resistance. So those two things are playing against Palantir right now. But the bulls have created a decent amount of space. Now, will they be able to set the daily higher low? and go for the trend change, or will this just be a lower high, and then will the bears be able to roll this over towards the lows here, potentially end up with a lower low situation to just continue this weekly downtrend as well, right? So the bulls not in true control of any time frame. The monthly here, guys, it's a monthly tightening range. So you can't say the bulls are in full control of this. On the weekly, they've lost the weekly to the downtrend as well. And on the daily, it's been daily trend uh, control for the bears as well. So really Palantir, one of your only tech names here that doesn't have control on any of its major time frames, right? So that's what's unfortunate about Palantir. But the positive thing, guys, is 15.50 down to about $14 is a huge area of supply. So if ever the price does come down in there, that's why I will be buying. That's where I will be buying shares of Palantir. I do expect the bulls to put up a heck of a big defense in this zone right here. So it could be a decent place for a swing trade opportunity. Palantir, obviously, we're going to have to look at what happens with these earnings. But Palantir on the verge of being eligible for inclusion in the S&P 500. So we'll see what happens with that. And we'll also see how much can they grow their EPS and profit margins over the course of the year after having just recently become profitable. That's going to be the story for, for Palantir over the course of this year. It's going to be EPS and margins. And now lastly, PayPal here, guys, right? So PayPal, right, pulling back on the day 0.57% to the downside here. But the bulls have put in a significant amount of work here, guys. So the bulls are looking after having lost this daily tightening range right here, daily bull flag, in other words, as well, break bearish to the downside here. The bulls heck of a move, right? The zone of recapture, right? The problem, the percentage of recapture was almost 0.786. So over 75% of recapture means the bulls have had great opportunity of setting a daily higher low for daily trend change. Now, will PayPal be able to use yesterday's low, pretty much the lows of all week, right down here around $60, 60 psychological, right? Which is also big, big, big support in the past, right? So this previous area, which is both support and resistance, this zone right here, right? Big, big, big chop zone. Big, big, big chop zone, right? So the sweet spot, right? The bulls are looking to milk. It's pretty much that 60 all the way down to about 57.50 area. So now really using that top of that area as support right now. So we're going to be looking, can they change the daily trend change? A break of $62 over next week. We almost did it today here, guys. Would be a daily trend change back to the bulls. At that point, your weekly higher low will just be set last week. I'm sorry if you can't see this. It's because I keep saying PayPal is crushed to oblivion. So I have to widen the chart. The only stock that I ever have to widen the chart, right? So you're just looking for continuation of this weekly uptrend with yesterday's low, looking now to move on into the 65 zone. If we do get all the way up to the 65 zone, guys, it's going to be a very big move for PayPal. Why? We'll be moving above our downtrending channel line, this yellow line that's been in place for a better part of the last year and a half. So very big uh, move potential coming up on PayPal. And as we tighten up and get closer and closer to this, the bull's probabilities of breaking it become higher and higher. So that's what I'm looking for on PayPal. So far, so good. To the downside here, guys, watch out for a downside break. At that point, we'll need to protect the line in the sand level, which is 57.65, which is your weekly higher low level, right? So really need to protect this zone with their lives. But PayPal shaping up fairly good here, guys, coming back above your moving averages. So like to see that on PayPal. So guys, that's pretty much everything that I had for you guys in terms of the video here. Oh, no, wait, we have to do my portfolio. Let's do my portfolio real quick. So guys, taking a look at my portfolio, we're going to keep this quick because not much has changed, guys. Really didn't open any new positions this week, but we're going to take a look nonetheless here, guys. So you can see on the week, we ended pretty much 8.73% to the downside. That's pretty much our new year-to-date performance. Obviously, if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that we put in a very beautiful year last year, pretty much right around 75% uh, to end the year, pretty much over the course of last year. But so far, guys, slight little decline in the portfolio. So we're trailing the indexes heavily, and that's because we've had a few a fall off on a few of our stocks since the beginning of the year. But it's currently starting the year in the red. Now we're going to be looking to farm some premium over the course of the entire year and put in another beautiful year. Anywhere between the range of 20 and 50% is going to be the expectation running the put wheel strategy. Now, taking a look at the weekly positions here, guys, you can see 
Not much has changed here, guys. I took a cheeky little 24 call here on CSIQ, just looking to farm a little bit of premium here. But CSIQ has been one of the names that's just fallen off a cliff, guys, since the beginning of the year, right? So since our December highs, we're down pretty much 16% on this stock as interest rates have come slightly up. And this being a solar stock is heavily rate sensitive. So my break even on CSIQ now is 27.08. We've been in the stock for a very long time here, guys, pretty much since the month of August, right? So it's been a very long time. We were able to drop our average cost from $35 all the way down to 27. So we'll continue to try and bring this down. But I do believe in solar's ability to have a nice recovery this year, highly interest rate sensitive. So we may need another quarter of earnings here and potentially a rate decrease to potentially really propel this to the north. But bulls trying to set in here a weekly trend change. Will they be able to get it? Well, CSIQ is not the only solar stock that looks like this, guys. The entire industry is pretty much down. So at least I have one of the best fair valued stocks in the industry. Still bullish on the company, no red flags, just really a cyclical business. So next we have CP here. So CP, you guys will remember here, guys, that I've been in this one for a while as well, right? And we got in at about 72.50 in terms of the assignment, and we've been writing covered calls, got some dividends ever since. So now we're average cost is down about 70.3. We have covered calls up here, 77.5s, for next Friday. Now, I did have the $80 ones, which we closed. We opened those last week here for $1.10. So this week we closed them at over 90% profit for eight cents. And we opened slightly lower here just to farm more premium at the 77.5 after CP had a little bit of a pullback here and kind of losing your daily uptrend here in favor of the bears daily downtrend. So just looking for some weekly pullback. So if this does continue in the next week, that's why I chose to write a bit lower of a strike here. If if it rises up, so be it. I'll be taken out of the stock. We'll have a very healthy profit, guys. The difference between, you know, 77.50 and roughly 70.3. We'll be even looking to potentially roll uh, covered calls one more time. But those covered calls, the options on CP are monthly options. They don't have weeklies. So that's why, guys, it's a bit tough to farm weekly premium on this. But we'll see what happens. I wouldn't mind being called away on the stock. It's been a very nice rally so far. And the ROI from the time that we've been holding is pretty much in line with what we want, 0.5 to 1% per week. Google, 141s. Google, we got called away here, guys. So our Google shares are gone. These 100 shares of Google, unfortunately, now are gone at this point, right? So we did a great job of farming Google ever since being assigned here on December 15th. Well, we're out pretty much one month later here, and we've collected a hefty amount of premium here, guys, right? So we're taking out pretty much our average cost with all the premium uh, encompassed here is pretty much 130.24. And you can see here, we got called away at 141. It's a very decent profit here, guys, right? We're talking, uh, let me put the calculator on this, right? In terms of the profit, 141 minus your 130.24, right? That's pretty much $1,076 here, right? And if you put that on our average cost, which is 130.24, you'll see that's an ROI of about 8%, right? And how long have we been in the stock? Roughly a month. So let's call it four weeks, roughly, right? Maybe it's even five, but let's say it's about five weeks, let's just say, right? So over the course of five weeks, we've put, put in pretty much 1.6% per week. That's over the account standard. We want to have about 0.5 to 1% per week on every position that we run by the time that we're out of the position. And this one we've milked very good. Google was a very beautiful trade. If Google pulls back again into the 140 range, I will be doing this again here at a slightly higher average, but nonetheless, very good trade by Google now closed. And the rest is pretty much the same here, guys, right? So Adobe shares still have those. They've come back positive. Amazon still have those still looking to average a bit more into this. TMF, our 20 year bond place still in those. Oracle now coming nicely back to the break even here. Uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin still have those tiny little starter positions. Any sc big consolidation, I'll be averaging more over January, February, and March. Baba, not high enough for covered calls yet. CP, just talked about it. Google called away. Nike, still not still not in range for covered call territories, but coming back up slightly. Starbucks, Starbucks really not performing well here, guys. I like the company at the average cost that I got it at, which is roughly around 96.52. But ever since then, guys, really been steadily declining, really filling the previous gap from earnings. So We'll see, can they get a little bit of a bounce going here as you're starting to get a little bit oversold on the RSI here. So we'll see, can they get it done here? Obviously your lower 90 area is a very big area of previous support. Very, very big area back here of resistance as well. So I'm looking for this area to really play uh, into our hands here, guys, and it acting as a nice little buy zone. If we dip into the 80s, I may even throw another 100 shares at it in terms of uh, writing another put. And in that case, guys, Trade Desk, Trade Desk, you know, performing relatively nicely, still not back to covered call territory. Territory, but I like this company, guys, a lot. It's one of my favorite pure play, uh, pure form advertising plays. I really like this in the mid $60 range where it is. 
Our average cost after being assigned is now down to about uh, 70.85 after getting a little bit of premium here on the puts and one week of covered calls. So we'll see here, guys, but looking fairly good. Trade Desk is just looking for the weekly trend change at this point. We'll see if they can make that happen. If not, I would be interested, guys, if we do pull back 65 down to about 60, I will definitely be writing another contract here looking to bring the average down and ride the, the stock up here. Uh, Palantir, not yet into break, uh, into covered call territory. My assignment price is about $18, so want to see a little bit of a price appreciation on these 200 shares, All right? You guys know that I played Palantir a ton over the past month, farming the 17 fives and 17s crazily. So I've collected so much premium on Palantir here. I'm not including that premium in these 200 shares, but we've made a lot of money on Palantir despite uh, being assigned 200 at 18. I've made so much money on the 17 fives and the 17, uh, pretty much close to about a thousand dollars actually, as a matter of fact, over the course of December. Uh, so these still waiting for them to come back closer to 18. My average cost on those $18 assignment specifically is going to be, uh, did I remove it from the chart? Yes, I did. So we'll just take consideration that this is correct here. 17 17.56. It's a bit lower. I think I have some covered calls uh, one time on them. So I think this is around 17.30 ish, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to wait until they're around 18 to write covered calls. PayPal still in these. CSIQ, we just talked about them. And my Canadian banking shares pulling back ever so slightly here from a high of about 20.7, 20.8 earlier on uh, about a week and a half ago, now pulling back. And I do have a thousand shares. So that does uh, hurt a tiny little bit in terms of that pullback here. But everything looking healthy, guys. Really can't complain about anything in my portfolio. So that was today's video here, guys. I'll be coming to you over the weekend with another video as well. We're going to be doing a top 10, this time top 10 growth stocks, most likely after this pullback, see what's left in the market. And as usual, if you enjoy the video, guys, consider dropping a like, would really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel as well if you're new. And as always, guys, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Anything technical analysis, stocks, uh, options, or macro, I'll be free to answer you guys. Just leave it down below there. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care and have a great weekend. Peace.